I'm convinced that you can literally buy whatever you want with eBay. I bought a laser. You can see I also got their lift gate service for $150 extra and I bought a rotary attachment, but I'll show you what that is in another video. So be sure you check back in a week or so. One week later. Look what I got. It's here. Isn't that the most beautiful pine palette you've ever seen? It's even heat treated. Oh, it also came with this. Let's find out what's inside there. Oh, baby. I think that is the back we're looking at. I never get new tools. Well, a couple. But this one's just so pretty. I get to make this one look old. Yes, paint fingers. I will make you look used. So to get it off of the pallet, these little silver feet are all screwed into the board below. And you just want to be real careful getting this off of the pallet because in the back there is a laser tube that's made out of glass and you don't want to cause any damage to that. With it off the pallet, it's now time to set it up. I'm going to do the most basic setup to get it operational. But later on in another video, I'll share some upgrades that I do to my laser to make it even better. Getting things ready to test the laser. This is the chamber that they provide for the water cooling system. And there's no lid with this. Um, what I've researched is you do not want contaminated particles going through your tube because it can shorten the life of it. So instead of using that, I got a five gallon bucket with a lid. And I'm gonna make that my cooling system instead. Okay, so there's an inlet and an outlet. Comes down into here, you stick the pump down to the bottom of your bucket. They provide you with this connector here, and I plugged it with that little black thing that came with it. That plugs right into here. And that'll be your output of water coming from the pump, going to the tube, and this is your hot water return or water after it goes through the tube come back in here I'm also going to have a temperature gauge in here because you want to keep your temperature within a certain range and I also have a fish aquarium heater that will keep it from freezing as well so keeping it in that homeostasis state it's recommended to use distilled water or deionized water Some people even put in like a little bit of bleach or a tiny bit of Dawn dish soap to help keep algae from growing. But you don't want to put too many additives in this. No antifreeze when I was reading. Any kind of things like that will just shorten the life, life of your laser tube. Which I don't really know the price of the laser tube in mine yet, but I don't really want to replace it yet. All right, it's a five gallon bucket. I did get five gallons. Now that I've got my water set up all the way that I feel comfortable with, this is the range that you're supposed to try to keep it in. So 59 degrees to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Got a little aquarium temperature gauge here and you can see I'm at 48 degrees, but I've also got an aquarium heater in there that has an adjustable thermostat on it as well. So it's heating up. I'll probably wait till it at least gets to 59 before I try to run it. For the air assist, I just mounted the little compressor to the wall here. I have it pointing up because anytime you have air being compressed, it creates condensation and moisture. So 
the water would have to travel up through the hose to get to the machine. And I also have a water air separator right here as well. And it, you can see it has a little, re little release valve here for getting the water out if it does build up in that spot. For some reason, the X axis randomly changes directions and sometimes won't even move. Work that time. I'm still pushing the right button, pushing the left button, and it went right. Pushing the left button. After fiddling around with it for long enough, I found out that this was the driver for the stepper motor that wasn't working. I pulled out these, and I checked these connections, and that one red one right here where the flathead is, it was not screwed in all the way. So once I tightened that back up, plugged it in, now, everything moves just the way it's supposed to. So now we're back in business, ready to go. Close the lid, laser is on, water pump is flowing, we need air assist. This is going to make it loud, but it's the centrifuge, it sucks out the smoke. Water temperature is at 73. start it. So it's going through different powers, different speeds. That's so cool. Check the water temperature. 74. It should take about seven minutes to finish this. And we'll check the temperature afterwards and see how much it raised. So this thing is crazy fast and very powerful. It did this entire thing in under seven minutes. And this is all filled in. That's 100% power, which is actually just running at 60% power. And it almost went all the way through the plywood right there. That is pretty crazy. And that's a speed of 100 millimeters a second. I gotta learn millimeters, I'm used to doing inches per minute, 60% power. So what you do is use this on whatever material you're going to do to help you pick the darkness that you want your um, engravings to turn out. So that's pretty neat and very handy. And temperature didn't change at all, so that's really a good sign um, because I don't want to pay for the $500 chiller yet. We'll see how long I can survive without it. All right, I'm about to send my logo. And start. Oh, it's so smoky. I'll show you. I've got the exhaust routed through into the attic, as well as my dust collector over there. It's dark outside, but oh, look at all that smoke! Goodness gracious! Golly, someone's gonna think my house is on fire. That is a ton of smoke. When this was running, I started to use my miter saw and it tripped that breaker right there, killing the power to everything. What's amazing is when I turned the machine back on and this got back power back, it asked if I wanted to resume from power off, which is crazy. I can't believe it could remember where it was. All I had to do was hit enter and it started right back up, right where it stopped. So, wow, that's super cool.
Can someone explain to me how this is even a thing? Ow. How did a bug get in my screen? Like, seriously. And how is that even moving it? There's glass in between. What is going on?